buyatoyota.com, and that'll be Nick Pivetta. Coming off a 9-3 loss in Atlanta, he allowed seven runs in four innings, eight hits. He also walked three. Very rough outing for the righty. Yeah, it's good, good time to get back on track. Defense here for the Sox. We got Devers at third, Reyes, Valdez, Casas is at first base. My pick to click probably going deep tonight. Yoshida in left, Duran in center, Verdugo in right, and Pavetta, as we just talked about, throwing to Reese McGuire as the battery mates. Your umpires brought to you by buyatoyota.com. Laz Diaz ducking behind there. He's also the crew chief. Estabrook, Fletcher, and Bacchus have the bases. We're available. The telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote. SAP is brought to you by Toyota Certified Used Vehicles. And our weather forecast tonight presented by Window World of Boston, the official replacement windows of the Boston Red Sox. Kind of muggy at the moment, 77 degrees. Partly cloudy skies, bit of a breeze out to left at 12 miles per hour. It's going to cool off dramatically tomorrow. So we're all going to be bundled up. Temperatures will probably be in the low 50s by game time tomorrow night. Wow. And I'm telling you right now, when I left Texas, like I told you, it felt like it was 110. So that's going to be a different, different cold. Well, Seattle at 21 and 20. They got over 500 with the win last night. A 10 to 1 victory. As Crawford gets in and Nick Pavetta a test tonight. And his first one right through there for strike one. Perry Hill, who is their infield coach, been doing stuff for 30 years at the big league level, says that JP is the best shortstop in the big league. So there you go, Bone. Has an eight game hitting streak, too. And leading the number one ranked defense in the American League, the Seattle Mariners team. Yeah, Perry Hill was our infield coach of the Marlins for many years, but a tremendous, tremendous coach. And he was doing the positioning before all these metrics and stuff of knowing exactly where we're going to hit the baseball. Yeah, highly regarded in the game. He's been at it so long. One and two to count Ty France on deck. Well, Nick Pavetta made just one start before tonight against Seattle in his career. That was May of 2021. He only allowed two runs over six innings. Threw the ball very well. It's as deep as I've seen but somebody in the batter's box. J.P. Crawford, his back foot's almost outside the batter's box. And Pavetta with 2-2 home. And got him. 95 right on the black. To set him down. Another look at the Seattle Mariners lineup here with France coming up, 277. Then Rodriguez, Kelnick, Suarez, Raleigh, two home runs last night, one from each side of the plate. Hernandez, Tramel the DH, and Wong at second. France is their hottest hitter. Soft line drive, Casas right there. Two down. Going after the very first pitch. Then we'll send up Julio Rodriguez at 216, seven home runs. And if he gets on, he can fly too. Mariners will run a little bit, at least at the top of their order. Two down. Absolutely love this body. If you were to put a baseball outfielder's body that's six foot three, runs, fields, throws, power, has the combination of everything, and that's why this organization's got a good one for many years. Rookie of the year last year. Get a great smile. Good looking kid, right? So if you have looks, that's a bonus. So there should be a little side check be here because marketable. You know, you can market like a guy like Ben Affleck looks. What's that like for you personally? What's it been like? Yeah, it's been great. I'll tell you right now, I was shaped like a pear. <laughs> uh, had a locker next to Gabe Kapler. Oh, good. Yeah. Very sad. Very. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of confidence when I took my shirt off. Still don't there, Dave. <laughs> well, <laughs> keep that to ourselves. And one, two. We'll miss high. Yeah, I think you're right, though, when you talk about Rodriguez being a face of baseball. A lot of folks back east probably still not all that familiar with him because he's so early in his career, but 
he's a guy for the next 15 years we're going to be talking about doing some spectacular things going to all-star games every year. Yeah, and, and you know what? Even with this pitch clock now speeding the games up, now you might have a chance to see some West Coast at-bats on the East. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, Mike Trout and these guys get lost because the story's got to be in, and that's all of a sudden fourth inning, we're in bed. Big time. Two, two, did he go? Yes, he did. That is going to be strike three and a good start for Pavetta. He fans two in the first inning. Red Sox coming up. And Casas followed by Valdez at second. McGuire doing the catching. And Pablo Reyes at short. Mariners starting pitchers brought to you by PNC Bank. Helping to make banking easier. He is a tough, tough customer. Luis Castillo, 2 and 1, 270 ERA. A major trade acquisition last summer that really paid off for them. And in there for a strike. Yeah, he's 5 to 1, walks to strikeouts. Anytime you got a guy out there with a devastating out pitch, which is his changeup. Fastball changeup he can pitch with that shows you a slider and stuff, but has velocity, but nasty righty on righty, righty on lefty changeup. Red Sox have not hit a home run in three consecutive games. That is a season high. Looking for some punch in that offense in the 0 2 foul away. Castillo took the loss against Texas last time out. Despite nine strikeouts and no walks, it was in five innings, did a lot of three runs. Broken bat, ground ball. Wong taking a lot of time and safe at first base. Verdugo beating it out, but Wong took all day. No doubt about it. What happened was he made a nice backhand play to the baseball, came up and didn't have a grip. Good hustle. This is what I'm talking about. Respecting 90 feet. When you're not playing well as a club, you got to run and respect it. And right here, you can see Wong making a nice backhand play, but just a little slight bobble. But going down the line, you don't know he's doing that. And look at how bad that pays off. And now you got a guy in first base, and here we go. D4. And now Massa hitting 298, six home runs. Rested yesterday. Last 21 games, though, batting 373. Castillo, six pitches, all strikes. Driven out to center. Rodriguez back over his head, and it slams into the wall. Keeps on rolling. Here comes Verdugo rounding third. He will score. Massa into third, and he dives in safely. And that's an outstanding start. Red Sox lead at one to nothing. First career triple in Major League Baseball for Yoshida. Wow, and let me tell you right now, that ball was smoked. J-Rod, you know, kind of went over his head. He got no man's land. Now, obviously, you know, that center field's 379, but jets out to 420. And you can see this pitch right down the pipe. Yoshida was ready for it. This is what you got to do against good pitchers. And this ball just cams right back out. and. Once again, hustle play by Verdugo. Yoshida all the way to third. Sox are up one nothing. Turner, a strike. Massa going hard with the headlong dive. Picks up his 25th RBI. Infield in several steps here with nobody out. Red Sox strike right away. Trying to add another. And a high fly ball into left field. Backing up is Kelnick. Turning around, turning around. And that ball. Boston. Justin Turner with his fourth home run. Well, we're calling for life in the offense, and how about that? How about that? First three hitters score, but it started off hustle play. JT getting 96 mile an hour fastball. Kellnick, once he looked up, that ball was in the monster seats. But this is this is big. We just talked about three games not hitting a homer. JT now getting the homer. Yoshida starts it off with a, just a missile to center, but here we go. Oh, Rafi hard hit, scooped up by France with a nice play. That one was hit very sharply. Red Sox home run brought to you by Audi. Visit your New England Audi dealer today. And there you can see it right down the middle, right? Pitcher's not hitting the spot right now. Take advantage of it. Big league hitters take advantage of missed spots. And JT late kick, barrel to the baseball. So sweet. And a high drive out there to monster seat. Sox up 3-0 there, OB. Coming to life.
Duran takes a strike, stepping in at 344 with a couple of home runs. So Justin Turner going downtown moments after the triple by Yoshida. The 0 1 will be blue foul out of play. I love the leg kick. If you can handle that leg kick like JT has, or like the Josh Donaldson, it's the, it's the perfect stance in the backyard. That leg kick, little bit of a hitch with the hands, and then boom. Great swing there. 0 2 got him. Let's take a look at Seattle's defense. Suarez at third base, Crawford at shortstop, Wong, France. Jared Kalanick out in left field. You got J Rod in center field, Teoscar Hernandez in right. Luis Castillo on the mound and Cal Rowley, who had a great night last night, first catcher, switch hitting catcher to hit homers. Brought to you by Audi. Now for both sides of the plate. There's a shot down the line. That one headed deep, and that ball is gone. Casas with a home run. Kevin Millar is picked to click tonight. And the Red Sox are on top four to nothing. He wasted no time. His sixth. There is not a better feeling as a hitter with the ambush home run. There's so many times we go to play one to do that, and we roll over or some pop up. Right here, Casas is ready for that first pitch and hit an absolute laser beam out there at 385 feet away. Valdez lays off ball one. Take another look. Backdoor slider, middle of the plate. Casas say, no, no, not here in Sox Nation. And that, that, that is a nice swing right there. Head stay behind that baseball. And that ball was hit really hard. I think it got under the Red Sox skin a little bit. They hadn't hit one in three days. Yeah, now you might see five tonight so far. We got two in the first inning. Well, there's the seventh man to swing here against an outstanding pitcher. Red Sox are knocking around Luis Castillo. Back on April 16, he had a perfect game through seven against Colorado. The Red Sox are swinging for the fences here. Two bombs and a triple in the first inning. It makes you look like you got a lot of energy when you swing the bats, right? When you're not swinging the bats, like, oh, the Red Sox are dead. And no, you might run to a bus stop like you did George Kirby. Now, Valdez will take a walk. Castillo's throwing 19 pitches, not a ton of pitches, 15 strikes, but just passed on Valdez. That'll send up Reese McGuire at 292 in search of his first home run. Red Sox eager to snap a four game skid. They've lost six out of seven. They have not dropped five in a row this year. And a count one and nothing on McGuire. Good pitchers like this, Luis Castillo, off a tick with his location. You have to take advantage of it. And I love the way they've come out aggressive, not afraid to fail. And he's hit that middle of the plate and they've made him pay. 97 on the gun there. And Castillo's last start against the Red Sox was May of last year. Just about a year ago, he fanned 10 over six innings. He gave up one hit. It was here at Fenway. It's actually one of the best performances the Red Sox saw all year. Tonight, a very different story. One and two. It's funny because guys like this, George Kirby last night, guys that throw a lot of strikes. Obviously, we have the reports as hitters. It's got to get up there and swing early. But when their stuff's on, commands on, it's tough, right? Tonight, same type scene. A lot of strikes, ton of strikes. But now the commands off. And now you got a lot of barrels. Yeah, and an inning that began with a routine ground ball to the second baseman. He bobbled it, charged with an error, swung on and missed for strike three. What a start, though. Red Sox have been looking for that offense. They got it tonight, 4 0. $100 to the team store. Sign up at Nesson.com slash home run trivia. See official rules online for details. Presented by Leader Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Red Sox on top, 4 0 after the first inning. So Nick Pavetta with some wiggle room gets Kelnick, Suarez, and Raleigh. Red Sox with a pair. Justin Turner and Tristan Casas going yard. 
Tried to hold up, but he went through for a strike. Kellick, 291, eight home runs, can steal a base too. Turner going downtown. And you roll out the pad, you get to watch it again. Curveball missing there, two and one. Kellick facing Nick Pavetta for the first time in his career. With Suarez on deck. What was your game plan when you were seeing a guy for the very first time? You know, I mean, at the end of the day, they've seen him pitch, they've watched videos, but I was looking dead red early in the count. You know, I was a guy that wanted to hunt the fastball in the count, and then you kind of adjust from there and know what their out pitches are, and with all the reports. Time out here. You kind of know what their go to pitch is, right? So then you get to a 1 2 0 2 count, you're like, oh, this guy's got a great changeup or is a great slider, and then you kind of adjust from there. But I was always dead red early. 2 2. Play made by Casas over there at first base and a sinking line drive. One away. Tell you what, now it's got a position right where they need to go. Casas making another nice play, kind of an atom ball. Kellnick opened that ball snuck through, but Casas with a little backhand play and a flip off to Valdez. Hey, Eugenio Suarez, third baseman. One for seven against Nick in his career. That one is a home run. Angels and Orioles are underway. In fact, they're in the fourth inning in a 1 1 tie. Yankees and Toronto scoreless in the second. Tampa Bay and the Mets no score in the second. They'll lay off and it's down low. Seattle going at the exact same lineup that beat up on the Sox in game one on the strength of 15 hits. He had a notion, but he did not offer it that pitch. 95 mile an hour fastball. Smart thing to do, right, as a manager. You just had 15 hits, scored 10 runs. We, we can't switch it up, and then I come, you know, and you kind of see, and you get two other guys, and they're like, why? Let it go. Makes no sense to touch it. Got a three and one. Right now, Seattle four games behind Texas in the AL West. They're in fourth place. Back to back 90 win seasons for the Mariners. High hopes this year to return to postseason play. Off the outside, he's going to walk him. So Suarez is on with one away in front of Raleigh. Who last night hit a pair of bombs, 438 and 434 feet. One from each side of the plate. The first catcher in the history of Fenway Park to do that. We looked and looked and looked some more, and no, Jason Veritek never did that. I asked him today personally. I'm like, you sure you didn't do that, Jake? Because no, in Kansas City, I hit three home runs. But uh, I, I, I mean, I would have. When you said that last night, I looked at you. I'm like, Veritek, didn't he have three against the Yankees? And you're thinking one lefty, one righty. Posada's been here a million times, right? Mm. It's just awesome night for Cal Rally, though. By God. Well, he grew up idolizing Jason Veritek. He was born in North Carolina. As you said, you know, growing up in Vermont, his father, Todd, is from Vermont and actually played in the Sox organization in 1991. How cool is that? Before starting a coaching career at the University of Vermont. And he'll rip a base hit into right field. He feels very much at home here. Yeah, Grandma was in the stands last night, another cool thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's always fun coming back to your hometown team and being able to do that, what he did, but we didn't like it. <laughs> Curveball right here. And when you're hot, those are your pitches. When you're cold, they're the ones down in. And right now, Cal is hot and got himself a nice hitable curveball and a line drive to right field. Nice swing. Last year, by the way, he did get Jason Veritek to autograph a jersey for him. And then to blast one over the monster, as you say, with his grandmother in the stands. Think about it. Dream stuff. It's it's what this game's about. Hernandez batting 236, eight home runs, couple of base runners. He's seen plenty of Nick Pivetta over the years when he was with Toronto. He's two for 18 against the right-hander. 
We would love a ground ball right at somebody. That'll be popped up and it'll twist back out of play. I'm waiting for a foul ball, by the way. I've told you that last year. We're going to get one together. We're going to get one together. Well, together is an interesting phrase because I think I'm going to be way over here. And we're going to put those hands of yours to work, making a great catch in the booth. <laughs> well, you saw me play first many years. I mean, there's nothing great about my hands, but I'm going to do my best. I'm a trier. World's better than mine, my friend. <laughs> he will check. Did not offer there. I did catch one last year, but I got to tell you, in the land of cookies, this was like the king. Just like very gently, right into the lap. It was like anybody could have made the play. Uh. We don't get many up here, but usually there's screamers. He's fallen to three and one now to Teoscar Hernandez after walking a man, lying a base hit. Trammell on deck. Red Sox just got him four runs. Suarez the man at second and then Raleigh on at first. And Pavetta's 3 1. And a little dribbler out in front. McGuire will gun on to get him at first base as they advance to second and third. Hernandez barely making contact there, and he's cut down. Yeah, thank you for that. That was a ball right there. Tiasca right kind of expand the zone inside. And, you know, Reese doing a good job getting an out. You saw him look at second base, did a great job getting out. You got two outs, make a pitcher out of the inning. And, like you said, we got a 4 1 lead. There's no reason to kind of rush that throw to second. So Suarez down to third, Raleigh into second base, and here's Trammell hitting a buck 30 with a couple of home runs. The DH, and they bat him out of the eight hole. Could not hold it and went around on the curveball and strike one. Pavetta, not razor sharp, 31 pitches, 17 strikes, that's 55%. Got that one right by him, though, at 95. Oh, and two. A little anger there. Yeah, you saw him kind of hump up on 95. And, you know, that's a good little sequence. Got him out front. So it's a teeter totter game, right? It's all about just kind of getting him out front and then rushing him back. There was the curveball 0 0, and then you got the 0 1 95. What are you looking for here? I'm sitting back doing the best I can. Now you're dogfighting, trying to get back into a 2 2 count. So we'll see. You take away the right side of the field, though, if you are Jamel right here. They lead away at second and third. And it was the heat. Yeah, and it was almost too good of a pitch, to be honest with you. Either elevate that, get it off the plate. Trammell had a nice swing there. And you can see this is just needed to get up just a little bit higher. Now I'm sitting softer with that swing. 0-2. In there, strike three. 79 miles an hour with the breaking ball. Stranding two. Back here on a beautiful night in Boston. Sox up 4 nothing in the home half of the second inning. And guys, after leaving his outing last night because of right lat tightness, as expected, Sox placed John Schreiber on the 15-day IL. He told me he felt hopeful this morning, waking up with no additional pain. Got some imaging, still waiting on those results. Sox also optioned Brennan Bernardino to AAA Worcester. They have recalled Justin Garza from the Woo Sox and selected Ryan Sheriff to the active roster. Cora said today, we need pitching, we need bodies. Also mentioned that those two guys, they throw strikes. That's right, Jermaine, a long trip coming up for the Red Sox, and that's going to be in there. Ray is frozen, and it's strike three. One man out in the Red Sox second inning, a 4 nothing Boston lead. It teed off on Castillo in the first inning. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, Reyes just drew back-to-back -back just paintballs. That was right on the corner. I mean, bottom of zone, and the pitch before that was on the other quadrant bottom of zone. Last call in both of them. Verdugo scored a run after reaching on an error on the first play of the game for the Red Sox offense. It started a rally. 296 with the five home runs for Doogie. Yeah, and I'm going to stress it a lot. Line in a right, closing on it, Hernandez. He'll run it down. Two way. But respecting 90 feet. 
That's just simple, easy math. Respect it. You don't know what's going to happen. There's drop pop-ups. We saw it with Bichette a few days ago in Toronto. Didn't get to second base. You saw just hustle, and then it's over. And there, I'm telling you, that started that inning, and we scored four. Yoshida, big part of that with a triple moments after that play. For his 25th run batted in. Last 21 games hitting 373 with 18 runs batted in. He's also hit five home runs in that span. Of course, he had a 16 game hitting streak, too. He is back over 300 again at 303. Fouled at the plate. Back to that triple. Yeah, right here. You can see just middle of the plate, fastball, and he did exactly what you're supposed to do at dead center. J Rock kind of got lost because that ball's hit so hard and the head first slide into third. Maybe the pants came down a little bit on the head, head first slide. We talked about <laughs> he was the highest pant wearer in the big leagues. Two hopper here to Wong, and that one he handles cleanly, and the Red Sox go one, two, three in the second. We're always happy to have inside the booth and along with Kevin Millar. We were watching Alex Cora in between innings. He was chatting with Laz Diaz, the home plate umpire. What do you think he was talking about? Just I think the Reyes strikes, he got both of them were against him. You know, that, that second one was probably down away, but the third one could have gone either way. He probably just let him know, hey, we get we get the rookie stuff, but let's go ahead and we're over here. Alex being a great reporter he is, is the first thing he talked about. We sat down and now a big outing for Nick Pavetta handed a 4 nothing lead right away. It's such an interesting dynamic with the Red Sox. Obviously the six man rotation is you know leaves you with the possibility of looking over your shoulder. Ray is on the charge near the bag and one away. The Red Sox are trying to tell are trying to take the approach that they aren't making every every outing a referendum on whether or not uh, someone should be a big league starter but obviously the results have to be better. The Red Sox rotation entering today has the third highest ERA in Major League Baseball. Uh, it's a talented group. It's certainly a more talented group than those results suggest but they start they need to start seeing improvement. One of the guys in that shot right there is Chris Sale of course and he's coming off a brilliant outing. James Paxton I thought was sensational over five innings the other day hadn't pitched in about three years and to throw 98 and pile up the strikeouts. So there's that kind of pressure too from other guys in the rotation. Yeah and Garrett Whitlock is currently making a rehab outing uh, with Triple A Worcester. He's uh, he's been a, a little bit up and down fading in his uh, in his third inning of work but there that's a guy who they really want to see getting stretched out as well. So uh, yes there's there's a game of music, musical chairs that's going to be happening at some point here with members of the Red Sox rotation. And yeah. then you, you have puzzling guys like I, Tanner Houck is the world's most dominant starter one time through the order and then it goes quickly. Mm. You know it's funny we're talking about that a little bit down below like if he could just develop and I know it's not easy because you're a power guy but like that nasty change up you know get with somebody that's got a great chance almost like a Mario Rivera teaching his cutter with different pressures but it's like that soft pitch because he threw dominant and Dave and I thought we were gonna have a glass of wine with an hour and 48 <laughs> minutes in that game mm -hmm. but I spoke I popped off is what happened I spoke. <laughs> <laughs> he played he blames himself but I mean you know for four innings he was outstanding we've seen this before absolutely seven times in 28 big league starts one out of every four major league outings he's gone through the first three innings without allowing a hit and then it goes fast after that uh, he has worked Kevin to your point on developing a splitter that's been a big point of emphasis with him dating back to when there was no minor league season to the alt site that the Red Sox had set up in 2020 and he's made a lot of progress willingness to, to use it against both righties and lefties but it's not that put away pitch on the same level as the fastball and the slider one man aboard after Crawford took ball four so the layman would say well just put him in the bullpen right he's tailor made to go two really good innings out of the bullpen totally fair perspective given that that's where his success has been in those three inning stints before things fall off but there are other guys for instance Jose Urquidy is someone with the Astros who had a history of being really good one time through the order early in his career and then learned to be able to sustain that success deeper into games so the hard part is if you want to be an organization that develops homegrown pitching you have to commit to homegrown pitching and let it develop almost a mental thing though now because you've heard it so many times so now Tanner's just going to kind of have to put the shielders on the blinders on and just figure out what he's got to do to do it because that's what you've heard a thousand times like I've dominated one through five you know one through four one through three but how do I get to that next because he did throw a couple great splitters 
that were out pitches last night that we saw start out as a strike and then we're down. Absolutely. And he's worked really hard to try to develop the cutter to be able to vary the looks that he's giving batters when he's seeing them a second and third time. It just hasn't clicked yet. Bounding ball filed here by France, who's been red hot, a 12 game hitting streak. Alex Spear of the Boston Globe joining us here. And this upcoming road trip, you really got to get right. And the Red Sox. You know, with the four runs in the first inning, went way down that road tonight. But you got to be right when you go out on this trip because this is a bear of a trip. Certainly, the, the talent level, we, we know that the Padres have been struggling relative to what their expectations were, but that's a pretty loaded team. And particularly with the starting pitching struggles that the Red Sox have had, going against that lineup could be kind of formidable. Uh, yeah, you can't afford to uh, on this. You, you can't really stumble uh, against the lineups that they're going to be facing. And Arizona has been really good, too. Valdez taps the bag for one on the first for the double play to retire the side. More with Alex Spear when we come back. Middle of the third, four to nothing, the Sox. It's in the booth, Dave O'Brien and Kevin Millar. We're talking about the upcoming trip, and that'll include a stop against the Angels in Anaheim. And Kevin and I last that were musing about what that contract, when he signs a free agent deal, is going to look like for Shohei Otani and the Red Sox may well see him there. You were talking about just what he did last night alone. Unbelievable. Even though he struggled quote unquote early especially early in the outing in Baltimore he still ends up going seven innings plus getting four hits including a homer. What he's doing is just otherworldly like it was already shocking to see what the first few years of his big league career had looked like. But my goodness over the last since 21 since 2021 it's mind blowing on a, on a day after day outing after outing basis just wild you're going to get a percentage of the team that's how it's going to start because it would start with 700 million if you're if you're being you know you pay 350 for a hitter you pay three over, over 300 million for an ace he's both he steals he hits home runs so where do you start well it can't be starting with a 700 million but maybe it is or here's a percentage of the team it is astonishing and I think that it's going to it, the dynamics run like anything else right like there's never been a guy like this who's been a free agent except when he came over from Japan and at that time the amount of signing bonus he could get was capped at a few million bucks which in retrospect one of the great bargains in modern sports history Crawford will dig this one out at short Turner who had hit a two run home in the first inning is now one for two Rafi Devers on the way up next. But on that road trip now, as you mentioned, you start with the San Diego Padres who have been underwhelming. They're probably going to be pretty angry. Then the Red Sox go to Anaheim to take on the Angels. They're playing a little bit better than people might realize, even though the Red Sox kind of smoked them here at Fenway. It was very early in the season. Then it's on to Arizona. They're like six games over 500. That's a good ball club. Yeah, really uh, a young core that's starting to come together in really interesting ways on both sides of the ball with Zach Gallen emerging as one of the elite pitchers in baseball and uh, Corbin Carroll looking like an absolute star at the top of the order. So there's there's going to be a lot of talent on that road trip. Raleigh right up against the netting but it's on top. Raffi over one. That's so right. I think you're exactly right about you know these kind of road trips. You know and the club goes to the West Coast and the Celtics are playing. They're playing huge games. It's kind of easy to forget a little bit. It is. Well I think those West Coast road trips can be real pivotal moments in seasons. I actually think back Kevin to 2004 when you guys were kind of in the thick the, there was like a real crowd in the wild card race in August and you guys had a West Coast swing and a, you know facing going head to head with some of the top wild card competition and absolutely yeah. rolled everyone and I feel like that was when like post trade deadline that that group really kind of took off 2013 a similar thing when the Red Sox were having a really strong season and they separated themselves with a the dominant West Coast swing. So good teams that are tight knit can do extraordinary things on those long West swings. Yep. Cut on a miss strike three two down with Duran on the way up next. He struck out in the first inning as we chat with Alex Spear of the Boston Globe. Well, games have sped along at such a rapid rate that last night when the game goes three hours we're all looking at each other like what happened. <laughs> what, why did that one drag out so long. It was 258 <laughs> last year we would have been doing like handstands if we, right. had, uh, if we had encountered one where we were getting out of the park after that. Yeah. It's incredible. We, we all get a little greedy. We we did too quickly. But the rules have worked so so well. Although we are seeing every once in a while Saturday was a was a tricky day for MLB with both with the Kenley Jansen 
quick pitch violations as well as Yuli Gurriel getting rung up on strikes in a, in a key ninth inning situation for a pitch clock violation. Well frankly I think the umpires have to take advantage of the microphone that they're wearing and let everybody know what's going on when some of these rules have been tweaked over the course of a spring training or the regular season. That's the cleanest way to let everybody know what's going on. The microphone's there for a reason. Other sports do it uh, very, very efficiently. Yeah, I think the communication, right? Because as fans, sometimes we're like, what was that? That was a better timeout. Okay, you get that. But something like that needs to be explained. This was a quick pitch violation or whatever that right, violation is. Right, because there was pointing at the watch. Right. There's nine seconds left on the clock, so there's a little bit of like, ah. Two and two. And I think Kevin Jansen was included in the slight confusion about exactly right. what the nature of the violation was initially. Contreras was pretty cagey but and he's been doing that all season long apparently as that one is outside for ball three. I'm not sure if it was remarked on enough. There were a couple of fastballs that zipped in up and in uh, in the Sunday game after uh, Ed Contreras. Yes. Kind of brought that on himself. A three two and that one hammered the other way and a foul ball. Just along the line. Duran is now in the Duran has now shown that he's able to handle fastballs in different parts of the zone. So you're seeing tonight with Castillo really attacking him with change ups and trying to make Duran stay on that pitch make him make him stay in the zone because uh, or see whether or not he'll, he'll expand a little bit beyond that and get himself out. Tristan Casas on deck he ripped a home run on the first inning. Red Sox hit two. And another one flared foul. So the division continues to be a killer. Red Sox are two games over 500. They're nine games out. Hmm. It's astonishing. You know, you look at teams that are well under 500, being much closer to first place than the Red Sox are. Uh, that start by the Rays is absolutely unbelievable. But the the opposite also works because the Rays are 31 and 11. They still only have a four and a half game lead in the division. So that also tells you about the quality of the division when the Orioles are still right there. Sure does. That's going to be strike three to retire the side. Red Sox go in order. Alex, always a pleasure. We'll see you again soon. Look forward to it. Red Sox up four nothing. Play Nesson's home run trivia tonight and win $100 to the team store. Sign up and test your baseball knowledge at Nesson.com slash home run trivia presented by Leader Bank. Here's your fourth inning question. Who is the Mariners franchise career home run leader? Edgar Martinez, King Griffey Jr. or A-Rod? Alex Rodriguez. Junior's way out in front on that one. As that one is flicked down the right field line that'll keep on sailing foul off the bat of Rodriguez. You're going you're going with Junior. I was going to go with Jay Buhner but Jemai we didn't have a Jay Buhner on there so I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah he was not an option <laughs> tonight. <Uncle Kim. laughs> I don't know, I, he might have been my favorite player certainly over that period but my favorite hitter might have been Edgar. Yes. Golly was he fun to watch because a oh. guy that can't run that just hit just hit flat hit line drive after line mm. drive. Great hitter. Rodriguez Kelnick and Suarez at three four five against Nick Pavetta. Fourth inning Sox up for zip. And a one two lifted deep in the air to center field backing up Duran still on the backup. Lunges to make the play near the gate. And a long way to go. But on number one. Yeah that was a long way to go and it's funny because that center field is 380 to the left side of it and 420 to the right side of it a hanging breaking ball here and J Rod if he would have hit it just about 20 feet to the left that probably goes off the green monster and Jared staying right with this baseball and it's a tough sky right now it's that just in between not quite dark so you got like a hazy sky and that's when balls get lost so it was a nice play by Duran who has been way more confident out there this year. Not even close, really. Kelnick 0 for 1. He's lined out to first. He has hit eight home runs on the year. Dropped it in there for a strike. The ball that he hit at Wrigley was 483 feet up there. Wind blowing out. I get it, but my goodness gracious, it, it, we saw it again this morning. It's still just an absolutely, that's not normal. It's close to 500 feet. Mm. A serious power here as he fouls it away. 
And the end of their bats, you can see this end of his bat, it almost looks like a donut. It's like it balances the bats. So it looks like he's choking up, but he's not. There's just like, it's almost like a weighted handle. And a lot of these guys have him. Paul Goldsmith's another one. But I was talking to Mark DeRosa, who is WBC manager, and that's what a lot of these guys have. Got him with the curveball. Two down. This is pretty new in baseball. Yeah, it's almost like the putters that they make. But right here, this pitch by Nick Pavetta just nice. Starts out as a strike, ends up as a ball. Great out pitch. But it's like, you know, these putter grips that they put weight in the handle so that allows you not to get your right hand involved but baseball bats now that's like the new thing it adds a little weight at the end of the bat to balance it out so maybe you can swing a little heavier piece of lumber Suarez took a walk his first time up would you have liked to swing that no I was a guy that hung my pinky off the end of the bat so I was a guy that kind of liked that for the whip I like the smaller handle which is more of a pull type handle you know a guy like Sammy Sosa swinging R161 Ripped into left for a base hit. Yoshida with a slide to cut it and holds him to a long single. But the thicker handle allows you not to roll over as much. Skinnier handle allows you to kind of get that bat through the zone. So it's all kinds of different stuff. And now the weighted kind of at the end of these bats, it's kind of interesting. It looks like a club at the end of these bats, some of these guys. Well, they have their second hit. Here's the guy who had the first one, Raleigh, base hit in the second. After two monster shots last night, he is up to seven home runs. He's also a good defensive catcher and throws very well. Yeah, and a great person. Really, guys love him. Ask about just a super nice, got that leadership quality, quiet leader, but can swing the bat, has tremendous power, 27 home runs last year, I believe. And you know it, obviously the night he had last night but you can see going into reports like who's hot it doesn't matter like sometimes we get emphasized on names but this is a guy right down the lineup. The game comes up on the line he's a guy you're going to want to be careful with because we know he's at the ball over the ballpark. You mentioned what a huge fan he is of Jason Veritek Tech of course acquired famously from Seattle. Along with Derek Lowe for Heathcliff Slocum in 1997. A little dribbler foul back behind the plate. And two and one. Think about that trade. I mean, just a remarkable scene. You never know what you're going to get. I think Derek Lowe was supposed to be a left handed sinker ball pitcher. Obviously, that was a mix up and an overweight <laughs> catcher. That was a mix up because Veritech came out of Georgia Tech. It's just a brick, you know what? And there's old Tech, the old Capitan, one of the greatest ever. Two out, one on. Now, what was it you were saying when you were talking about had he ever homered at Fenway from both sides of the play for a while? Did he think maybe he had? Yeah, it was kind of. I asked a tech, are you are you sure? And he kind of was thinking. He's like, no, nah, man, I hit three home runs against Kansas City, but nothing from both sides of the plate. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, but switch hitter with power, you would assume that all the years he played here, that that would have happened. Sure, Raleigh's going to take ball four. So a little bit of a speed bump here for Pavetta after he got the first two out quickly a base hit and a walk. And Bush is coming out. Red Sox pitching coach Dave Bush with Teoscar Hernandez on the way up next. Red Sox exploding for four in the bottom of the first inning. Led by Amasio she a triple off the fence and center. Justin Turner with a long home run to the monster seats and Tristan Casas lining a home run to right right over the short fence for a home run. Hernandez thrown out by the catcher McGuire first time up. This guy's been trouble for the Red Sox over the years in a different uniform with Toronto hit 22 home runs against the Red Sox with the Blue Jays over the years. Right, we'll take a ball. He's a dangerous hitter because he's a strike breaking ball power guy. You know he'll expand he gets swing mode so you can expand them off the plate but those strike breaking balls you got to be careful with him. Trade acquisition from Toronto play on and the tag is not in time. Suarez getting back in there with the hand. That trade did shock me because he's a good player. You know, a lot of power, good arm, good defense. And, you know, when that happened, I'm like, wow, that was a 
because Baltimore I mean uh, you know the Blue Jays lineup you're thinking wow yeah a couple of years ago he made the all star team hit 32 home runs yeah drove in 116. So Pavetta a bit of a scuffle here he throws out a baseball gets a new one it's two and oh on Hernandez who's homered eight times 235 hitter has two on two out through their strike said pretty good life on the heater tonight. And his 2 1. Another good one. 2 and 2. There's your life. He really has. That, that fat ball's got a little extra at 95, and you can see it kind of just elevate through that zone. That's a good four seam, good old fastball. He has one strikeout in the inning. And a liner. Duran dives and can't get it. It's past him. It's going to go all the way to the track. Two runs are going to score. Hernandez racing around second. He is into third. He stops there. And Seattle jumps right back in it. Duran took a chance. And two runs scored on a play will be a triple. RBI is 21 and 22 for Hernandez. And you know what, Jaron Duran had a nice break. It's a tough play. I don't mind him right now laying out. You got a 4-1 lead. Two did come, but that play, he was on it. Sometimes you make the catch, sometimes you don't, and that ball goes all the way to the 420 mark. But the effort you love. Brings up Trammell is 0 for 1. He struck out looking first time up. So a 4-2 game. And this all happening, these runs with two down. And then time granted to Trammell. Best center field coming in on a baseball in the history, in my opinion, was Andrew Jones. He made the Andrew Jones would make those plays coming in on a baseball is the toughest play because it's a line drive off the bat, but Jared had a nice break. It's just, just a tick out of the reach. Swing and a shot driven down the line past the pole and that is gone. And just like that this game is tied at 4 4. Tremell the third home run of the season. And just seconds after the two run triple it is all tied up. Well, you can see here, here's that fastball, but this one just right down the middle. Tremel was ready for it and hit a ball and kept it fair over that pesky pole. But it starts with that, just that two out walk. And then we were talking about Cal Rally. It's a guy you got to be careful with, but those two out walks, you know, up by four. And the next thing you know, here we go. Next thing you know, two run homer. And the trident comes out. <laughs> Dangerous try that. And a 4 4 game. All four runs after two down. That one shot toward the alley. That's going to sail out. There's nobody out there. The track it goes. Bouncing back to Duran. And Wong will rop into second base with a double. Five consecutive batters have reached. I would imagine this is not a long leash tonight. Yeah, once again, you know, located middle away. Colt Wong actually making a nice swing going left center. His guy's been struggling hitting 172 coming in that bat, but that uh, that swing doesn't look like that. That was a nice piece of hitting, and Pavetta needs to find a way to get it out here. Top of the order in Crawford, who has an eight game hitting streak. Some guys moving around, no one warming yet. Two down. Well, Nick Pavetta handed a 4 0 lead. That's all gone. There was the base hit by Suarez that got it going. You mentioned the walk as well by Raleigh. And then triple, two run homer, double.
And a very quiet Fenway. Here's the 1 1. High fly, jacked into right field, but playable. Verdugo backing up, backing up, he's got it. Side retire, but a brand new game. We are tied 4 4 in the middle of fourth inning. License. Red Sox got four in the first inning. Seattle just got four in the top of the fourth. So we are dead even. With Casas leading things off here against Luis Castillo. Ripped a home run solo shot in the first, number six. Home runs have been coming, including 442 in Atlanta. Singles need to come too, the base hits. He only has nine singles and about 113 at bats. In fact, more walks than he has hit so far. As the Red Sox try and rally themselves here, it's a very good pitcher. Two time All Star. Castillo's 2 1 and foul away. Yeah, he's got a knowledge of the strike zone for a young hitter, and that's, you know, that's important, right? But then it also, like you said, the singles, there's times you're going to have to handle a pitch off the plate. And it, that'll come, you know, but this is a big boy. So when he hits the baseball, good things will happen. You know, sometimes walks are great and there's times to grind, and, but there's also times to take those knocks, and sometimes they're expanding off the plate with the size of this kid. Red Sox team that does not strike out very much. Came into the game with just 329 strikeouts, second fewest in the American League. Overall, their strikeout rate is the fifth lowest in baseball. Though this is a strikeout pitcher. That's going to be inside checked, and he is off to first with a walk. So Casas is on. Statcast is powered by Google Cloud. Yeah, you can see right here is both the home runs of Justin Turner and Casas right here. 373 feet on Casas and Justin Turner, 389 feet over the monster or into the monster seats, but that was quick in the first inning. Valdez with a walk in the first goes after the first pitch pops it up and a play for Suarez in foul territory one down. That'll bring up Reese McGuire handing the catching tonight. Bale going tomorrow night at 710 against the left hander Marco Gonzalez. Brian Bale going in two and one coming off a really nifty outing. In Atlanta. Red Sox will travel right after the game cross country. They will have Thursday off. And then three games against the Padres. Hot shot. Glove comes off. Baseball inside it. And France makes the play. Knocked the glove right off his hand. Huh. Down to second goes Casas. <laughs> that happens. You know, your hands get sweaty. And sometimes that ball gets smoked. And it hits it in a perfect spot. Ty France, the glove stays right there, no double play, steps on first base. But you can see here that backhand just slipped off his hand. I was a guy who always wore a batting glove for that reason. I always had sweaty hands. Like I have sweaty palms right now now to this game. <laughs> to recover the fumble. Deep short. Crawford slings it and right on the money. And that will retire the side. Nothing comes to the leadoff walk. Pavetta's pitching line is brought to you by Ace Ticket. Ace Ticket with the best seats at the lowest prices. So he's walked three tonight. Gave back a four to nothing advantage. Ty France will lead it off here in the fifth. He has gone 0 for 2. High chopper, but in foul territory for strike. He's lined out. He's also hit into a double play. One of the hotter hitters in the American League right now, a 12 game hitting streak. Baltimore out in front on the Angels 4 2 in the sixth inning. Yankees lead Toronto 2 0 in the fourth. There's a line shot for the corner. That will keep on bouncing down the line. And that'll be an easy two bases here for France, make it a 13 game hitting streak for the first baseman. 
He just hits. He's just a guy that kind of hides over there in Seattle and just hits. Gives you a quality of bat, good right hand hitter. Doubled up on the fastball once again, right down the middle. That just you, you, you're not going to have good success when you're catching that much of the white plate to big league hitters. That's just the bottom line. Well, now Rodriguez, he struck out and flied out. Leadoff man in scoring position. Last year as a rookie, 28 home runs, 25 stolen bases. Had a terrific series at Fenway early in the season. He's 22 years old. Got the world at his feet. Mm. One and one. And a good kid. Very humble. That's what I like about him. His demeanor, very humble. And just that combination of speed and power, like you said, 28 homers and 25 bags, you know that's going to creep up. He can be a guy that's going to 40-40 like a Ron Acuna type ability. At third, backing up Raffi, snags it. The runner moves to third. Close play. He's going to be out. France safely into third on the long throw. Bang, bang, play at the bag, but he is out. And France at third base. Great play by Devers. This is a tough play for a third baseman. One. You are catching the ball almost back there by the shortstop position going away from first base makes a strong throw but you can see him he's almost on the cut of that grass which is 120 feet away from first base with a guy that we just talked about can run and Casas making a nice job using his right leg off that right corner of the bag to extend himself. Just saw Matt Chapman when he came to town right about where Rafi made that play is where he stands every day. Yes. With that cannon he's got infield in here's Kelnick. Up and away ball one. You can flip a coin with Arenado and Chapman. I don't know who's better, but you watch those guys play that position, and Rafi has worked his butt off to become a great third baseman. But those guys are just elite. From the same high school. Man, think about that. The 1 0. Right through it with a curveball. I always love those stories like Max Fried and Jack Flaherty, and then that. And it's like, what? Did that school not lose a game ever? Four years? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> did they have any pitching? Did it matter? <laughs> two and one. They probably hit third and four, too, because back then that's when you do. Now it seems like there's POs, pitchers only at ninth grade. I'm like, no. Your best players were the starting pitcher, and you hit third and you play short. Sure. Back in the day. One out, a man at third here for Seattle. They try and grab the lead. Three and one, Mon Kelnick, who's driven in 21. And Suarez next. France, the base runner. Ran it past him, three and two. Good cutter there. 3 1 count. You got a righty on base. You don't want to give in with the 3 1 heater. And this is where Nick made a nice pitch here. Needs to make another one on a payoff pitch. The last time out against Atlanta, Pavetta only went four innings. Gave up eight hits, seven runs. Got a little deeper tonight. Pitch number 87 here. Swung on and missed. He got him. Struck him out for out number two. Yeah, he didn't give in. Started got got behind 3-1. Went cutter, slider, slider, and that was a nice sequence. To a good young left-handed hitter, but sometimes you got to take advantage of aggressiveness as young hitters. And he took the 87, 86 mile slider and even lost his footy on the mound. His fourth punch out, Bush out again. With Suarez coming up, he has walked and singled and scored a run in the fourth inning when they rallied to put up four and tie it, including a Taylor Trammell home run. Red Sox with a pair of home runs in the first inning. Justin Turner and Tristan Costas going yard. But that lead has disappeared. 
Pavetta trying to survive here in the fifth inning and keep it 4 4. Runner at third. Suarez certainly a home run threat. Taking ball one. Suarez last year hit 31 home runs. He drove in 87. A strike. A little bit generous, maybe. Mm hmm. Labs expanded a little bit. We'll take it. 1 1 count. You can see right here, just on the outside part of that down away quadrant. Pitchers trying to hit those four quadrants. 1 1 coming. Check to swing and it's inside. All three pitches have been good pitches. The first pitch right there in the down and in quadrant. The second pitch got the call down away quadrant and they're off the plate. You still got a base open. You know this is where you still got a, a base open. You got two open even when Cal comes up. But that's the situation that you got to pitch and make pitches right now. He's been so good in the series we're calling him Cal now. That's it. It's Cal. <laughs> Cal Ripken. <laughs> 2 1 off the plate. Nothing near there. Raleigh next. And in this game, a single and a walk and another run after all the damage he did last night. Hitters count now for Suarez. He does have one career home run against Pavetta. And he will put him on. Ball four runners on at first and third. All right, win big with the Red Sox Foundation 50-50 raffle. Buy tickets at RedSox.com slash 50-50 through the sixth inning of tonight's game for the chance to win half the net jackpot. Oh, almost. See official rules for details. <laughs> I'm trying to read one of these promos without hanging it. I almost got by it, guys. I stood up even. I love how you grade yourself as you move <laughs> along. <laughs> like, oh, almost got it. Golly. Well, activity now in the bullpen. A double and a walk in the inning. Yes. Sheriff about to get rolling. Ryan Sheriff, who has just called up to the big leagues today. And starting to get active. Recalled from Worcester. It could be moments away from his Red Sox debut, but Cal Raleigh will hit a single, a walk, a run. A little dirt in the eye of Reese McGuire. I think he's going to go ahead and get some drops. Yeah, new pitchcom here. Yep, pitchcom. Used to be eye drops. Now it's pitchcom. Fastball down and away. So Pavetta in some trouble. Got an early four-nothing lead. And now Seattle has the go ahead runner at third base. And a very dangerous hitter about to climb in. Still a base open. Still a base open. Even though it's first and third, two outs, you still make your pitches here. You still have some room to make pitches and see if we can get Cal swing outside that zone. Now the lefty just starting to throw in the bullpen. Two down. Two on. He's up to 92 pitches. And the pitch com issue for McGuire's trying to get that squared away. And now he's ready. France at third. Suarez on at first with two out. And a ball away. Teoscar Hernandez on deck. He had a two run triple under the glove of the diving Duran last time up. Talking about the man on deck. One and one. With a curveball settling in. Cal looks relaxed at the plate, though, you know. You got a single on a walk, but 
You can see as the game as you get hot the game slows down. One one coming. Can't blame him for feeling relaxed. He had the game of his dreams last night. Good arm speed on that curveball by Pavetta. Really good arm speed. Came out left at 92 93. And good location. Try to get out of this with a one two pitch. Swing and a miss. He put him away with the curveball. He does get out of it. Two men stranded. You can see how that starts up up and then ends up down away or down in and Nick with a big pitch right there. Biggest pitch of his night. Keep all your bases covered with Amica Insurance. Empathy is our best policy. So we're still tied 4-4 four four at the midway point. Dave O'Brien alongside Kevin Millar and also Jemai Webster downstairs. Red Sox started off with a blast. In fact, two of them in the first inning taking a four nothing lead. Now dead even. Anybody's game as Verdugo will lead off the inning. He's reached on an error. He's also flied out to right. Four runs, six hits for Seattle. Four runs, three hits for Boston. Castillo, after the trade from Cincinnati last year, first home start at Seattle at T Mobile Park, was a dandy against the Yankees. Eight scoreless innings. With seven strikeouts, he was off to the races. Got the win against Toronto in game one of the wild card series last October. Seven and a third, no runs, didn't walk anybody. Three oh hat. I like it. Let's go. I'm not mad at that at all. I like that. I think you would have enjoyed playing. For Alex Cora very much as that's in there for strike because everybody has it until they take it off. I love it. I mean one thing about Alex Cora great teammate tremendous teammate knows the game. But yeah why not guys that got tough out pitches let's go. High fly left field pretty well struck back up there near the wall it's going to catch some of the green. And into second base with a lead off double Alex Verdugo. The Red Sox have a man in scoring position just like that. His 14th double of the year. And that right here is why we love Fenway Park as hitters, okay? This is why. It's not so much the home run, but it's that ball that the outfielder's got to stop. And you're just begging it to go out there about 316 feet away. Most parks might be that, you know, F7. Now we got a leadoff double and let's go, bottom of the fifth. A wall scraper. He'll take it. Yoshida with a triple. His first with the Red Sox in the first thing that drove in a run. One for two. Trying to put the Red Sox in the lead again. Backs away and it's 2 0. Said hello to him at the cages, man. I tell you, you don't realize, you know, he's not a real tall guy at all, but I'll tell you, the bottom half is put together. And in the cages during batting practice, just absolutely the ball just flies off, uses his lower half as well as anybody on this team. The bat comes through the zone pretty quick. And you know, everyone's got different bat speed, obviously, a little bit different. The ball jumps a little bit differently. What we've figured out with Massa is it almost has a second life when it gets airborne. It takes off and then takes off again. Mm -hmm. And as he looks at the strike. Turner on deck. Justin with a home run in that first inning. Koss has hit one as well. There's a drive out to right. He turned on that one and drilled it down into the corner. One bounce and that is quickly into the stands and that will score the run. Masa Yoshida has made it five to four Boston. His second extra base hit tonight. Yeah, look out. That cycle's right around the corner. We're a single and a home run away from the cycle. He's got the triple and the double. But I'll tell you, hitters count. Looking fastball, got the fastball. Driving in Doogie here. But you can see here, once again, we were just talking about that ball's creeping on middle in and a hitter's count. 
That's no bueno for a pitcher. Nice swing there, and there's that short fence for the ground rule double. Now Alex Cora on that top step, thinking maybe, just maybe, we get out of here. But took a bounce and a ground rule double. Second RBI of the game for Massa. And that's why I love Alex Cora. He lives and dies with his players. And, and, and you know, th this game's hard, right? You're going to go through struggles. You're going to go through ups and downs. You know, your pitching staff, your offense. We talked about coming to the game. They have a homer three games, and they hit two in the first. But so many things. But the one thing you want your manager is in your foxhole. And the one thing Alex Cora is, he's in your foxhole. And he understands how hard this game is. You know, his whole life, he was all defense, defense, defense. So he's a baseball guy. Justin Turner will sock that one foul, ripped a home run in the first inning. Up over the green monster, he has since grounded out to third. Sox trying to end a four game losing skid. They've dropped six to seven. Trying to put that in the rearview mirror, and that's downstairs, two and one. JT, just a great veteran, great guy, great addition for this club. Got the big home run the first inning, gives you a nice at bat against good pitching. Good pitching, hits good pitching, and that's a big deal. Change up there, two and two. Filthy. Castillo pitched on some bad clubs in Cincinnati. Still went 15 and 8 in 2019 with a 340. 2021, he was 8 and 16, but with a sub 4 ERA. Right field. Hernandez, as it hangs up, will make the catch. Tagging up Yas Masa Yoshida, and he is quickly down to third. Yeah, it stops right there. Good at bat right there, JT. Gets Yoshida to third base, right? Nobody out. Hitting the ball to the right side, drives the ball to right field. Now you got a runner in scoring position, less than two outs. Those are those are those veteran at bats. You know, the pitch before that nasty sinker down in, that's a 6 3 pitch, and then stays on 97 and goes right to right field and gets Yoshida over. So it'll send up Raphael Devers, a ground out, a strikeout tonight. Infield has come in for Seattle. As he takes a ball. Crawford very, very active at short. Look at where he lines up, up the middle. Very rangy, too. Pop foul out of play. 11 home runs for Raphael. Does have a five game hitting streak. So looks to be out of his slump. Mm -hmm. 31 career games against Seattle. He's hit nine home runs, including the first of his career. Mm. One and two. Good swing there. Good swing there. Hard, soft, and went back to hard. Devers, that's just an inch. <laughs> See him shaking his head like, mm, wants that back. Red Sox back out in front. Looking to add on now with one out. That one gets by to the backstop. Here comes Masi is in the score standing up. That off speed pitch that got away from Raleigh and the Red Sox lead it six to four. You can see right here change up just kind of spiked it. Cal couldn't quite get down get that glove down that ball goes to the backstop. Good base run. She had read it right away. Foul ball chopped into the box seats just behind <laughs> home plate. You do not see that every day. Not from a lefty. From a lefty. Right? The 2 2. He'll pop that one the other way. Long run for Suarez. And can't get to it. Now the change up there, two and two. Red Sox uh, grabbed a 6 4 lead against one of the tougher pitchers in the American League in Luis Castillo. Had some great swings off him tonight.
One away. And swung on a miss for strike three. Second time tonight. Rafi has fan. Two down. Yep, this is the slider now. You got the changeup around 87, 88, and here's the slider around 87. Both really good pitches for him. Duran with a couple of strikeouts, one in the first inning, another in the third. He'll swing and jack that one. Long drive, hit it to the bullpen, and kiss that one goodbye. The Sox go deep for the third time tonight against Castillo. It is seven to four. That went 417. Boy, did it. He's given up two sliders on 00 pitches, one to Casas and one to Duran right there. That 00 slider middle. They made him pay right away. Great swing. Home run number three for Jaron. Red Sox in the inning with two doubles and a home run. And now Casas, who is your pick to click before the game. And here's that slider right there down the middle. Duran ready for it and put a great swing on it and into the bullpen stands it went. Makes you happy. Makes you feel good. He is strong. Talk a lot about the speed, but he is strong. What made you pick Tristan Costa before the game to hit a home run? You know, just just watching this kid, yes, he knows strikes him, but there has to come to a time when you just you're aggressive. Now I didn't know he's gonna go oh oh slider and a bullet in the right field. But the body and power play, and you're just kind of you kind of holding your breath, waiting for this to play, you know, and in this game. Got a timeout here, but in this game, it just takes one at bat. It, it doesn't have to be a hit, but he, he knows the strike zone. Now it's just be aggressive in the strike zone. You got a strike thrower in Castillo, and it was just basically luck. Let's be honest. <laughs> More I think about it's luck, and I'm, I'm done talking about it. Get the 30 it. second explanation. Oh, it was just luck. Got lucky. Like your honesty. Three and two. You know how many times I walked the place, I made a homer, and then when you hit a homer, you're like, I called it. But about there was 247 at bats before that it didn't happen. <laughs> Big strong kid He's got a chance but here's a high fly ball that's well hit. All the way back Hernandez and coming in on the track to make the play almost got another one. Red Sox do score three and they lead it seven to four. A hundred and twenty five years. I'll do your job though. That one went out of play. Uh, Back here in center field, we're having a good time. Uh, everybody is really excited that Kevin Millar is doing the game. You guys want to be on TV real quick? Come here. Come here. Yeah, you'll be on TV. Come here. Ready? This could go wildly off the rails here, guys. <laughs> Come on. No, it's like now the security won't let him go. Hang on. We'll show the pitch. Fly it out to center field. Duran on the move to the track. And that'll be out number one. All right, you just asked the biggest question of the night. What are you doing? We have no idea what we're doing, but are you having fun here tonight? Oh, yeah. It's my boyfriend's birthday. See, the boyfriend's birthday. Right, you're all Kevin Millar fans. I know you're excited. He's in the booth. Say, go, Kevin. Go, Kevin. See, there you go. <laughs> Kevin, they're fired up for you. I'm going to get it back to you before I get in trouble. <laughs> all right, big props for Uncle Kev. We're going to take the break. Sheriff coming in. With the Red Sox leading it 7-4 to four in the sixth inning at Fenway. Top seven to four over Seattle and a pitching change brought to you by five for now.com a call to the bullpen. This is Ryan Sheriff the left hander he's been around a while 32 years old he's pitched for St. Louis and for Tampa Bay previously. A.J. Pollock a pinch hitter for Trammell who only belted a two run homers last time up. Yeah it's a new game now I mean at sixth inning you hit a homer and then you get pinch hit for it. Sheriff just up triple A making his Red Sox debut here tonight. One and one to count on Pollock. With the bases empty. And foul back. T 
TC was revved up, huh? The best. Hilarious. I mean, I'm glad he's doing the news. He was doing weather doing or something. The news. Yeah, you do the news? You don't even know who I am, he said. Fans up there like, <laughs> hey, you're doing a great job on the news <laughs> on 6 and 11. What's the forecast? <laughs> we'll pop up near the dugout. Goss is ranging over there, but can't get to it. Couldn't quite get there, I guess. Can you dive up in that net? Oh, sure. Well, let's go. Unless he lost the last second. About six foot five coming at you down there in that net. If you're sitting in the stands. And the lefty home with a one two. The looper and not enough room there for McGuire. These two clubs will finish up this series three game series tomorrow night. And it's 7 10. Bale against Gonzalez and the Red Sox head west for a long spell. Three series out on the West Coast in Arizona. Two and two. Those are nice West Coast places though. You're going to San Diego Anaheim Scottsdale Arizona before it's 200 degrees. Good restaurants there, huh? Will be. Oh, you got some yeah. favorite spots. You're probably gonna have your flip flops on and your bathing suit oh, out there. Oh, the you beach. know it. That's all me, Uncle Kev. File back. Hey, Trevor Hoffman's got a nice house out there on the beach. I think he's the one little house out there on the water. He's got a couple surfboards. Why don't you call him and you and him go surf in the morning? You know, and then we're on to Anaheim. You know, and that's it's always gonna be beautiful there. Sun shining. Batter time out here in Southern California. What do you think when we get to Zona? What are we talking about? 110? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You're gonna you're gonna be in the 90s probably. Take it's not it. bad. It's that dry heat they always say. That's but they, they always say. act like 105 is dry. I'm like it's still 105. Give me some shade. 105 is 105. I'm with you. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Two down. A little right. breaking ball. Yeah, Ryan Sheriff with a nice breaking ball. Now starts out kept chasing your back leg and that's exactly where you want the lefty on righty breaking balls coming out your back leg and usually that's a shin burger off your front shin. I lived it. I still got bruises in it I think it's like jelly. Colton Wong is doubled and grounded out to short. Red Sox up seven to four. Showing a bunt. Loopy bunt scooped up by Sheriff. Nice play. Shovels it out to get him. And they go one, two, three in the six ring injuries, respectively. Whitlock made the start in Worcester, went four innings, five hits, one earned run. It was a homer and four strikeouts. Alex Gore said he'll likely have another down there. Crawford piggybacked his start. He went three innings, three hits, gave up an earned run, also a home run with four strikeouts. Gore says he'll be activated for the Sox series against the Padres on Friday. All right, very good stuff there. Great progress for those two. Tell so you wonder about Whitlock with this long West Coast trip. Got one more coming up. Could the Red Sox see him on the upcoming trip? The very end of it? We shall see. But one man out here. All good news there. Yeah, it's great news getting both those guys going because Garrett Whitlock, big, big arm when he's right. You know, you just see it. So Cutter Crawford also. So that's that's good news for the Red Sox. Reese McGuire here has gone 0 for 2. Red Sox with a 7-4 lead on Seattle. Offense has woken up tonight. Red Sox have hit three home runs. Justin Turner, Tristan Casas, and Jaron Duran. After the Sox had gone three games without a home run. Pablo Reyes on deck. So Sato, the new pitcher, taken over for Luis Castillo. By far his worst outing of the season. As he gives up a seven in five innings. He had not allowed more than four. They jumped on him. In the strike thrower we talked about before the game, like nine walks, 52 strikeouts. And they jumped on him, and he had a lot of the white early on, then kind of settled down, then went back at it. Yeah, Masio Shida really the guy who got that going with that triple in the first inning. No doubt about it. Fastball down the middle and hit it just a bullet right over J. Rod's head. And you know, I'll say for the third time. Verdugo with a hustle play on the air by Colton Wong to start that inning. 3 2 in play gently. Wong will flip on, two up and two down. 
Tomorrow at 6, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Rodenheiser Home Services. We will preview the pitching matchup between Marco Gonzalez and Brian Bayo. Perfection. No, that was about a 92 because I stuttered right around here when I went to preview. And I don't know if it's a fake teeth. I don't know what it is. It's a lispy fake teeth. Kind of can't get the words out. Dude, you are a really tough self-critic. Will you like this as a ball player too? Yeah, I just, uh, yeah. You, just, you know, you just, I was a bad reader my whole life. Still am. That was. One ball and one strike. I thought it sounded great. Were you a, were you a book reader? Could you read well? You know, Still am actually. Really? Yeah, read a lot. Love history. Aha. Uh -huh. Big history fan. A nut about history. Well, you're in the right city. Oh, betcha. I would tell guys take a walk and just learn. Truly is a 2 1. That one socked down the right field line. Remember the first time I found out, wait a minute, I can go into Paul Revere's house? It's still there? Right. Like, Thought that was the best. That was like five years old, I think. Talking with Kenley Jansen today, you know, just how awesome it is to be here. He loves it here. It's just such a great place. You don't realize it when you're not on the Red Sox, and then when you get a chance to play for him, it's just a wonderful city. Slap to short. Crawford will fire on and dug out by France. I'm dying to know what Casas is eating over there with a fork. Inside the dugout. Gale. Gale. <laughs> Seven to four, Boston. There. Have a report. <laughs> Blackberries, blueberries, and strawberries. To the seventh, Red Sox with a three run advantage. We have a report from the dugout. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries. Yeah, mine was Snickers and a hot dog. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Swing a high deep drive. That one way down the right field line off the bat of Crawford, but it's going to be a foul ball. Hit it a ton, but foul. He's got 0 for 2 with a walk. There's an eight game hitting streak on the line. Baltimore beating up on the Angels eighth inning seven to three the birds have the lead the Yankees in Toronto knotted up three three in the sixth inning Tampa Bay seven to one on the Mets in the seven that's in New York Yankees are at Toronto I wonder how Buck Showalter is doing you know it's just that's another team that just quite hasn't swung the bats or like a little bit like the Padres you're kind of waiting for them to go Yeah, the 20 and 22 popped up foul ground McGuire endeavors and a catcher wants it and takes it nice play by Reese for the out got there plenty of time France will be next and here comes Cora And it'll be Winkowski through the bullpen gate with Ty France on the way. So Sheriff does nice work in his Red Sox debut, and now the right hander will take the break. Red Sox seven, Seattle four here in the seventh. Pitching change presented by Sullivan Tire and Auto Service. We're always here to get you there. Josh Winkowski, appearance number 16, 255 ERA. Now, one man away in the Seattle seventh inning. He's about to take on France, who ripped a double last time up to extend his hitting streak to 13 in a row. But then Nick Pavetta got the next two, walked a man, kind of pitching around Suarez, and then struck out Cal Raleigh to get out of that inning. And the Red Sox would get three in the bottom of the fifth got a good game you know that was a nice answer by the Red Sox you give up a four run lead you see how teams are sometimes you can quit Red Sox been fighting back and back up three France 278 couple of home runs hit 20 home runs last year made the all star team for the American League and the 0 one. Wrapped to the shortstop. A little bobble here by Reyes, recovering in plenty of time to get him. 
And two down. And here comes Rodriguez. Red Sox have silenced him tonight. A strikeout, a flyout, and a ground at a third. Yeah, they've held him down this series, you know. He's a kid, obviously, that can do everything on a baseball field, but nice to catch these guys when they're not quite locked in. Yeah, he struck out three times last night. Although a big win for Seattle. Here's the one nothing. Hot shot, base hit into right. So he's on with two down. Going the other way. That ball got deep on him and he was able just to explode to the zone. There is no pull on this swing. This is straight up perfection on just a nice line drive base hit like you were talking earlier. There's times when you just got to take that knock, you know, and right there he took that knock. 22 years old. Where were you at 22? Yeah, I was in St. Paul, Minnesota, playing for the St. Paul Saints in the Northern League, making 600 bucks a month. 600 a month. You know who my roommate was? Who? Leon Durham, the Bull. The Bull, remember him? He played. He played with us, and we met in the lobby. And he asked if I wanted a room together. And I it was two other guys in a one bedroom, and Leon had the room. We were on the couch, 600 bucks a month, playing a wood bat league, and I'm ready. Fouled away, and who noticed you? You know, Gary Hughes. Oh, the great Gary Hughes. Gary, Gary Hughes, rest in peace, one hmm. of the great scouts for the Marlins, signed myself, John Thoden, and Rick Hertensteiner for $5,000 in a package deal after that season. We won the championship. It was the coolest summer ever. You're riding buses, you're getting paid to play. And went into Florida as we got, I got a $925 check. I thought I'd made the jackpot. Took all my buddies <laughs> to Outback Steakhouse in Beaumont, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> you could do some damage in a place like that with money like that. Yeah, I'm not great with mine. I'm still paycheck to paycheck, OB, but for sure there's my signing bonus for 900 bucks. I thought I hit the lottery and took the boys out, but you know, it, it was the greatest summer learning from Leon Durham. Pedro Guerrero played for the Sioux Fall Canaries. I, I was a Dodger fan my whole life, and he was my idol. Swing and a miss to strike out Kelnick. Red Sox bullpen doing good work here. Seven to four. Sox have the lead. Triple Turner homer. Casas with a homer. Now it was four nothing in the first. Great job by Verdugo. Seawall coming out of the bullpen. 3.32 ERA, 2 0 record. Verdugo to lead it off. Red Sox seven and Seattle four. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Red Sox trying to break the four game skid here tonight. Along with that play, Verdugo has added a double and scored a run in the fifth inning. So it continues to score a lot of runs among the league leaders. Masio Shida on deck. He has a triple and a double tonight. No sweeper action there, one and two. Timeout granted by Laz Diaz. Not a ton of hits in the game. Seattle was seven, Red Sox was six. The Red Sox have made him count with three home runs. A base hit here. Doogie will have that batting average back over 300. Still meaningful for you as a baseball fan and an analyst to bat 300? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the number, right? I think all hitters try to get to and stay at. Uh, you know, it's it's the one thing coming into spring training, right? You, you, you work all offseason, you figure it all out, you're watching tapes, and then the year starts, and everything's magnified early on, right? That's all we have is a scoreboard, so you throw up a two for 10, that's 200. But I think that 300 mark, it just proves that you are in dogfight mode day in and day out. He'll drive that one down the left field line, but it slices foul. So you, you still think for the average major league hitter, and I know you'll get another school of thought on this, that batting 300 has real value. It has real value. I mean, to me, that that's, you, you look at a guy, because listen, this is a failure sport, right? You're, you can get out seven out of 10 times. 
and be great. He'll take a walk here. But it's how you deal with the failures, how you deal with the right hand turns. You get up 500 times a game and you're going to make 350 right hand turns and 150 left hand turns. How do you handle those right hand turns is what separates the great ones. You're going to go through these peaks and valleys. You're trying to get out of those valleys quick and get back in that box. But it's that attitude of just I'm going to get them next time. I'm going to get them next time. And you preach that with kids. But the difference this level is mentally we're a little tougher because you're older. Yoshida with a triple a double. Pair of RBIs tonight. In between, he's grounded out to second inning, 306 with six home runs. Three eighty six on base. Nine oh one OPS. Looking for the single and the homer for the cycle. Not that you want to see him get up two more times other than if you're blowing him out. Flies that one in center field routine play for Rodriguez. And one away. Time now for our high strength steel plates presented by New England Chevy dealers. Little guy, but uses his lower half as well as anybody on that team. And here in the first inning, got a fastball right down the middle off Luis Castillo and hit a bullet to center field over J Rod's head. Start off with a nice head first triple. A little bit half of Pete Rose. He needed a little more air. If I was to go ahead and coach that, a little more air on the dive. You know, Vlad Jr. had a big old dive in the second base and he got airborne. Justin Turner takes one inside. Yeah, that many, many decades old replay of Pete Rose diving into third. He started his dive at shortstop. It was unbelievable. So everybody wanted to be Pete Rose. Mm -hmm. Dads and the kids my age. I mean, those. I mean, he, he was just all ball. You know, all baseball. Right. Played the game hard. Remember the All-Star game, taking out the catcher. Yeah, Ray Fossey. Ray Fossey. It just man, but he just he he played baseball the the hard way. Ray, God bless him. I don't think he ever forgave him for that. Ten at work in the bullpen. Do go on with one down. Justin Turner looking for a second knock tonight. Gets under this and pops it into shallow right. Wong out. Hernandez coming in and nobody gets it. Verdugo scoots on down to second. Miscommunication on that play. And it falls in. The Red Sox get fortunate. Should have been an out. Be a base hit. Yeah, that was weird right here because Teoscar, you know, I don't know if he's fooled on the swing, the big swing by JT, but it was kind of like he's trotting in. That's a tough play for Colt Wong. I mean, you're, you're in mid right field and you kind of see Teoscar just kind of jogging in. You have to hustle in. And then once you kind of see your second baseman, I mean, that was kind of in that no man's land, you know, Colton kind of got back there thinking he was more, I guess, behind him more. But uh, yeah, we'll take the knock there, JT. Raffi 0 for 3. It's got to be the greatest feeling in the world for the batter. You pop it up, you drop your head, you're like, ah, I made it out. You know, I'm out. Seconds later, your batting average is going north. That's exactly right. You need those. We just talked about the failure sport. You need those. Swing and a drive foul. Raffi, number two in the majors in RBIs. Adolis Garcia of Texas is number one. God, how about his arms? Whew. His numbers, too. Man. Garcia turned the cover off it. You know, that lineup, I mean, they're, they're, they're swinging the bats, and that's without Corey Siegler when he went down. The other guy stepped right in, didn't skip a beat. Spent a lot of money they built for this, but they have a three game lead in the AL West, Texas does, over Houston. Good ball club. Yeah, Bochy's perfect too to bring in. Yeah. I mean, when he came back, you, you start seeing these old school managers coming back in the game. You know, your Buck Show Walters, Bochy. Uh, it's just there's a presence when they walk in that lineup. You know, I mean that that clubhouse. You know, you know who the manager is. Three one. He hooks that one down the line, but a foul ball to the tarp. And you're absolutely right. I mean, Bochy's a, a Hall of Fame manager. He was amazing in San Francisco, winning what three championships there. Yes. He retired. I was like, no, he, he shouldn't retire. 100%. You know, Astros bring back Dusty Baker. Yes. He wins the World Series. But 
you just it's that old school vibe just to kind of guys have that respect when they walk in. Three two big swing and a pop up to center. Rodriguez under. Runners will hold. Two down. In front of Duran who destroyed a home run in the fifth inning. Raphael for four. Duran started out with a quiet night a strikeout first thing strikeout in the third but then tore into one for a line shot home run over the bullpen. So he's one for three. Yeah he just I mean Jacoby Ellsbury's good year he looks like this kid. You know he just reminds me because he got that combination what we're talking about that speed and power and Duran's body man he is just in great shape mentally just a lot calmer not so much pressure. You know as a young player you're trying to establish yourself at this level it's hard so your offers you're just you, you you wear yourself out thinking I got to get three hits stay in the lineup but this year a lot a lot of just presence on you can just see he's relaxed. A one. Red Sox ahead seven to four in the seventh inning. Sox took a four nothing lead in the first inning. Seattle came back at four to tie it in the fourth. Red Sox with three in the fifth. Pretty quick answer. Off the end of the bat. 0 and 2. Back to his home run in the fifth inning. Yeah, an no old slider right here down the middle. And he didn't let Louie get away with that mistake. He hit that ball real hard out there in right center field over the bullpen on those seats. That's a long way from home plate. Verdugo is second, Turner on at first. Brian Bayer to go tomorrow night. Red Sox right now hopeful that that will be to win the series. Around the outside, two and two. Good takes, good pitches. Paul Sewell seeing if he can expand that zone, but just off the plate. Good call by Laz. Got a 2 2 count here. Floated towards center field, and that'll drop down for a hit. The run is in. The Red Sox double up Seattle. Duran with his second RBI. That scores Verdugo. Remember he walked to begin the inning. Here comes Scott Service the manager. And a two hit game for Duran. Going to bring 10 on. So another pitching change and the Red Sox continue to add on runs here in the seventh inning on top eight to four. From the Dominican Republic, 6 1, about 200 pounds. And about to square off against Tristan Casas, who's had a good night with a home run and a walk. Red Sox have hit three home runs in the game. Now getting some breathing room here as we begin to move toward the late stages of this one. They took care of the talented right hander Luis Castillo, five innings. Got him for seven runs, his worst start of the year. Red Sox offense waking up after slumbering for a few days. No doubt. You could have a worst start of the year, and why not the Red Sox give it to Luis Castillo and see if we can hold this lead? First and third with two away for Tristan. Runner at first, taken off, and Duran will easily make it down to second with a stolen base. That'll be his seventh. The way the game is played today with stolen bases really opening up if he continues to hit like he has been hitting talking about Duran 35 40 stolen bases is not beyond the realm. No, that's exactly where he'll be playing time and at bats no doubt about it. Long way to go yet yeah, two men in scoring position with two down. 
one boxed by Raleigh but the runners will hold Made a nice sprawling effort to get to it. Turner the runner at third could not score. Yeah that's a good read because it's one of those in between reads right. Turner was ready. You can see here once that thumb goes down that thumb needs to go up and you see Cal rally just kind of thumb goes down and that you called it boxed it. But JT I think would have been out. Good hustle by Cal to get to the baseball. Three and oh. Valdez on deck. And strike. Generous. The reason why I know about the thumb, I went in instructional league in 1995 to come try to make a team as a third string catcher. Thumb up or thumb down. You know, and that outside corner, you always kind of want your thumb up, and you can kind of see that thumb went down, and that's when you get those sprain thumbs. Filed away. How'd you like it back there? I'm gonna be honest with you, OB. It was uh, it was miserable. <laughs> uh, John Bowles was our farm director at the time, and I said anything to play in the show, have a chance to say you caught. Never caught my life. They asked me to catch. I was like, yeah, yeah, high school. Never put on gear in my life. Never did. And I was catching ten bullpens a day. Now I realize why catchers. They struggle hitting. You miss a lot of groups, but you're catching these guys throwing 95 to 100 in A ball. I learned a lot. I didn't want to catch anymore. <laughs> learned you did not ever want to catch. <laughs> that was always the amaz amazing thing to be about Tech is his ability to still hit yes. and be an outstanding <laughs> hitter and yet miss so much of the hitting part of it. This was working on the skills back there. The three two is going to be in there. He struck him out. Red Sox will strand a couple, also get one. It is eight to four. For the eighth inning, Red Sox leading Seattle eight to four. Dave O'Brien alongside Kevin Millar and Jemai Webster. Winkowski into his second frame. Suarez leading off one for one. He's walked a couple times, has a base hit. And Raleigh will follow. Eight runs on eight hits for the Red Sox, four runs on seven hits for Seattle. And a mile high pop up into short center. Valdez out. Duran can wait under it. One man gone. Join the Sox of the road in some of Major League Baseball's most iconic ballparks or come to Boston for a bucket list series at Fenway. For more information, go to redsoxcom destinations. When you were a kid growing up, what was the ballpark you couldn't wait to get to to see in person? It was Dodger Stadium. I mean, we went there a lot as a kid, right? And just Finn Scully and the voice and the radios. Bound to the first, charged by Casas, two down. You know, back then you would hear Vin's voice all over the stadium because either, you know, dads had headsets on, you'd hear the CB radios going, but his stories were just remarkable. Like you said last night, he did the, did the broadcast alone. Mm. And it was just something that you gave you chills and you get yourself a Dodger dog. They're hanging about three inches off, you know, out the bun. You know, they weren't real thick, That's so they right. were perfect. Yeah. Dodger dogs are great, but it's great. You know, you get a little malt, little chocolate malt they had coming around. The guy would throw you some peanuts. But, you know, back then, it was before it was $417, you know, <laughs> right. Maybe the 12 bucks was like that amount. Great ballpark. Remember the first time I walked in there it was as a young broadcaster with the Atlanta Braves. I was standing next to Bobby Cox, who was managing the Braves at the time, mm -hmm. in their dugout on the first base side. He said, "This is how you know you're in the big leagues. Take a look at this place. It's you know, just the infield. It looked like a putting green. You, oh. had, you had the palm trees in the backdrop, and yeah, it's it just it's something about Chavez Ravine as a mm. kid. I mean, that was my home little team, and sure. you loved the Dodgers and Pedro Guerrero. I tried to hit like in high school with that little bat wiggle." It's such a treat whenever the Red Sox visit Chavez Ravine and get a chance to broadcast games there. It's a perfect broadcast position too. Just absolutely perfect. It's exactly where they should all be. Mm -hmm. Everything's perfect out there. That's right. It is. Just, it's just perfect. Old school stadium. You know I love the old school stadiums. You know I love Wrigley and Fenway and old Yankee Stadium new Yankee Stadium it's not as much you know I just mm -hmm. love that smell in these old stadiums and you think about all the great memories Kirk Gibson's home run off Eckersley and sorry Eck, I know he's yeah he loves that right. memory, yeah. 
Two two. <laughs> and a full count. Can you imagine though, Dodger fan? Like, I mean, Gibby walks in plate, limps up, boom, backdoor slider, and oh, it was just the memories, just yeah. like they are here in all these old stadiums. That was Vin calling the game. Here comes Gibson on two bad legs. Keep you going. <laughs> high drive. He is gone. He is, oh man. Yeah, Eck doesn't really appreciate that memory as much as we do. <laughs> Three two fouled off. You know you grew up going there. I grew up coming right here. You know seeing games with my dad my brothers three brothers. Not many you know because even then it was expensive to take a, a yeah. family of that size even at Fenway Park but. So this was your park. Oh this was it from day one. The looper toward right and that's going to drop down for a base hit. And so Teoscar Hernandez has his second knock he had a triple back in the fourth inning. And will always be. You know besides you know the old four runs and stuff like that before you were working as a kid what was like the best game that you're like wow I remember coming here with my dad and watching Mark Fidrich you remember the yes. bird Mark yes. Fidrich with Detroit yes. this was at the top of his form when he was talking to baseballs and he would get down on all fours and he would yeah. groom the mound and I remember him throwing a spectacular game here it was one of the few times I ever had box seats in my life right along the first base side not far from the pesky pole really. And he was incredible all night long. My dad said, watch, he'll never get one above the knees. Until he did in the eighth inning to Yaz. Oh. And Yaz put one into the net. It was a two-run homer. And the Red Sox won the game two to nothing. It was the only mistake he made the entire night. So amazing. I'll never forget that game. How great is that? Yeah. Yeah, he was a he was a character. Oh. Huh? Man, he was the, he was the real deal too. So was Yaz. Yeah. And the old net was My before favorite. the monster seats. That's right. Way back in the day, when we had a net up there. That will scoot on by McGuire, and the runner will advance down to second. Hernandez will move up on a wild pitch. And the ladder remains. The Carlton Fist home run, waving it fair. Never forget that one either. I had fallen asleep. We were at home in Marshfield. From the South Shore where I grew up and when he hit that home run and Pudge hit it my dad raced in and woke up the entire family. <laughs> he was the only one awake at the time. Yes. That game had gone extra inning. And woke everybody up. He said you got to see this. You got to see this. Oh and man. It's incredible. So good. So we love the game. It's in your blood mm -hmm. you know. Two two on the way. And a full count here on A.J. Pollock. Red Sox with an 8 4 lead. Looking to even up this series and break this four game skid. And Winkowski's 3 2. And a ground ball to the right side. Valdez digs it. And that will retire the side. One hit, one left. PNC Bank helping to make banking easier. Last half of the eighth inning. Kevin Millar, Dave O'Brien, and Jemai Webster, 8 4. Sox have the lead. Great crowd here tonight. Valdez has gone 0 for 2 of the walk. Hitting 283. 110 staying on to pitch his second inning. Red Sox did excellent work against a very good starter tonight. One of the better guys in the American League, Luis Castillo, knocked him around for four runs in the first inning, got three more in the fifth inning. Casas, one of the home runs. Red Sox have hit three. Also, Justin Turner and Jaron Duran. And Chris Martin is up in the bullpen. It's all right hander. It's not a safe situation. It's a one hammered foul. Now, aside from the ballparks we're talking about, 
that you and I both love so much Fenway Park and Dodger Stadium. The other place that you walked into as a player for the first time and said to yourself this is the real thing too. Sam Fran. Fly ball center field by Valdez tracked down by Rodriguez. So are you talking about as a player or candlestick. No so candlestick was windy and you know Will Clark and that swing yeah. and, you know it was cool but the new stadium when they built that the first year uh, it was the most beautiful stadium you've ever seen. I mean you obviously you have the bay behind but you had this big glove. I think that Giancarlo Stanton was the first one to kind of get it there which was 500 feet away. You know uh, but that was a special place because candlestick was so like candlestick yeah. 49ers <laughs> right. like yuck and then you kind of it was great for this. Joe Montana. That's right. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else. Right. It, it, it just uh, yeah that the white Clark catch in the back of the end zone not for Cowboy fans but it, it was it, it's a beautiful state to this day. It, it really is. is you sit up on a beautiful day. And Tremendous. They're on the China Basin there in downtown San Francisco Red Sox are going to be there at the end of July really looking forward to that. Yeah it's a beautiful place Wrigley Field's first time you've there the same thing like Fenway as players you walk out and just stop. Sure. You know that backdrop center field and bleachers and Sammy Sosa doing his ear. Reese McGuire will bloop that one into center field that'll find a home out there and he's got himself a base hit. With one away in the eighth inning. I learned a lesson though. I was with the Marlins playing right field. So first inning Sammy Sosa runs out there does his ear to the stands and he runs kind of all the way to the center field and they all get up and do it. So Derek Lee and Dempster all the guys said you're not going to do that. I bet you won't do that. I said oh done deal. So bottom of the first I run out there and do that and they start booing me <laughs> screaming at me. You suck Malar Billy Ray Cyrus with my mullet and I'm telling you for four straight innings I'm like I, I wanted to cry. I'm like maybe that wasn't a great idea guys. Maybe that wasn't my best move. <laughs> In there for a strike on so, Reyes. I didn't realize I wasn't disrespecting Sammy. I was just being silly with my guys. You know, we're in last place, having some fun, but sure. that, that wasn't cool. I thought they were going to love me. Yeah. Why don't they love me? Oh, man, it was good stuff. I remember those days with Sammy. Tried to check it, he did. It, well, the other thing that a lot of players used to talk about was coming down that tunnel from the visiting clubhouse mm -hmm. when you get into the dugout at Old Wrigley. It's, it's a million years old, but Babe Ruth walked down that same time. You think about the people that did, and it's pretty much the same view once you get there to the dugout. I mean, here's that great, you know, area around Wrigleyville, and you see the buildings that have been there for like 180 years, yeah. and it's really cool. That's like here when you go, Ted Williams played here. Yeah. Like you walk out of here at Fenway Park. Line shot, that'll drop for a base hit. That'll put runners on at first and second. Red Sox looking for more here with a couple on in the eighth inning. You know, it, it, it is, it, it's remarkable because exactly the history on these old stadiums, you know, and then my first home run was inside the park home run at Wrigley Field. Your first major league home run? First major league home run off Rick Aguilera, who was closing, was traded over from the Twins, I believe. Mm -hmm. My dad was bowling with his dad in Valencia, California, about 30 miles from Dodger Stadium. And that night I hit a three run inside the Parker to beat the Cubs on Rick Aguilera's first closing opportunity in Wrigley Field. My dad's all ecstatic. I don't think Rick's dad was ecstatic but I'm thinking he already had 10 years in and that was my first home run the slowest guy me and Paul Canerco probably would tie in a race. Did you ever hit another one inside the Parker. Yeah. Fenway Park only guy to have a inside the Parker I think in Wrigley and Fenway. Wow. That's not bad. And a base hit the other way by Verdugo. That's going to load the bases. McGuire will apply the brakes at third. Three consecutive singles here with one out. See, we're, we're talking and we're having conversation, and next thing you know, Sox are raking. But yeah, hit the right center field pull before that bullpen and ricocheted all the way over Vernon Wells. We were playing the Blue Jays, went to go get it. The right fielder went to go get it. And Reed Johnson was the left fielder, and he was backing up third, and that ball went all the way down. How about that? To, to the Green Monster and at Wrigley and at Fenway. At Fenway, yeah. I mean, you got to have luck, right? Sammy lost the ball in the Ivy, and that one hit the pole. Here's Yoshida. Red Sox trying to bust this wide open. Massa with a triple and a double, two RBIs. Only one out, and they are all filled up. Sox trying to make sure of this one. And a strike. Not a change. One and one. 
McGuire at third, Reyes at second, Verdugo on at first. Wrapped to first base. France will take it, and in time to get the out there as another run comes in to score. Yoshida will record his third RBI of the ball game. That'll make it nine to four. And two down. So Masa with a good night. Two extra base hits and three runs batted in. Good to see him back in the lineup after a night off last night. Runners at second and third now for Turner. The Sox have 11 hits. Turner with a couple of them, a two run homer and a single. This is when you have a chance of a big night right now. Big knock, three hit night, driving four. This JT starting off with that last at bat, right? You got a little pop up and it ended up being a knock, and now you can kind of put together a great night. At third base, Suarez will have it and throw on to retire the side. Red Sox get their ninth, end of eight, nine to four, Boston. Recalled from Triple A Worcester before tonight's game, about to make his Red Sox debut. Acquired off waivers from the Angels back in April. Has pitched in the big leagues before, but first time with the Red Sox, and that is through there for a strike on one. 471 ERA in 21 major league games, all with Cleveland in 2021. And a strike. We know he's got a change up. Wong is one for three with a double. Ninth inning at Fenway, Red Sox leading it nine to four. And the 0-2 on the way. He hangs in there. Remember Matt Garza? He's with the Rays. Sure. Yeah, he's a good pitcher for many years. Remember the last name Garza. I'm like, I wonder if they're related, but. Tampa Bay with an 8 3 lead on the Mets in the ninth inning. If they win that game, they're 32 and 11. I mean, they don't stop. It, 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 since the Joe Madden era, I mean, it's like 90 games a year. You couldn't name five guys on their team. Little ground ball to Valdez and a fast out. One gone in the ninth. They draft well. Always, you, you can't miss out on your first rounders. You know, all their pitch hitters. David Price's and your James Shields and Evan Longoria's, but they all came up and they helped them at the big league level. They always bring up a guy from Double A, have no idea that helps them at the big league level. It's an organization, I'll tell you, that just finds a way to get it done. Crawford's got 0 for 3 with a walk tonight. I did not see the power that this Tampa Bay team is showing coming. Did not. Same team as last year. You're exactly right. And they came in, you know, their spring training was a little odd. They were in Orlando, I believe. But it, it, it's just, yeah, I, these kind of things happen. It's like the Giants two years ago. They went 103 games or whatever it was, 105 games, and they led the league in home runs. You're like, what? The Giants? Where'd this come from? Mm -hmm. You know, and then they come up last year and didn't have the same type power numbers. Sharply hit, but Reyes gathers that, and two down in the ninth inning. Following x rays Live, stay tuned for the Red Sox final presented by Aspiration. We will have more player reaction and the latest news from around the major leagues. I'll give that an A. I didn't stutter. A, A plus. Well, thank you so much. I should have had you as my <laughs> darn teachers. I would, I would have passed. <laughs> have my own problems. <laughs> Believe me. Swing and a miss here by France. One for four in this one. Red Sox closing in. I'm putting this one into the win column. And ending a four game losing streak. Victory in the Red Sox will go to 23 and 20. One more left on the homestand tomorrow night with Seattle, and that's on the road after a day off. Way out west. Going to San Diego, then Anaheim, and then Arizona. And you will be headed back to Texas? I'll head back to Texas tomorrow night, Thursday. And then uh, 
I'll be back here end of June against the Marlins. Little golf tournament Portland Maine Ooh. week before that. You do know what you're doing. That's a great great place to be. Uh, Portland Maine some great memories played for the Sea Dogs in 96 and 97. It's just a wonderful place that old port downtown get us some lobster at the Mellows. Oh, tremendous. 2 2 swung on fly ball center field. Duran back it up. He's got room out there and that's the ball game. Red Sox win it. Nine to four. The bats showing up big time tonight. Yeah, we talked about that. Hit a home run three games, and tonight they came out and hit some homers. Look good and build some energy for this West Coast road trip after tomorrow night. So that snaps the four-game skid. Red Sox.